That'll work. Okay. Okay, all right. So today, you're in your little pods that you're sitting in. This is going to be your little group for the day. Um, so hopefully you picked a wise group. If you didn't, maybe you want to move. Don't do that. All right, so uh, stop. All right, but what we're going to do today is we're going to practice today doing some of these self break proofs because we've only started this, right? We've just kind of touched the brief surface of what these properties are. Well, today is the, is the day that I want to practice. Can we get better at this? Can you, can you get a problem in front of you and run with it and see what we're kind of doing? So that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to flip through some, uh, flip through some of the slides because I want to go through the properties. Now, we're obviously on section 2.6 day. This is the last day of 2.6. We're moving on to 2.7, 2.8 on Monday and Tuesday. Um, because 2.7, 2.8, we mix them together. This is where we take this algebra stuff and we apply it to a geometry type of problem, right? So we're still in algebraic proofs, but we need to get better at this um, because it's not going to go away. I kind of hinted at this last, um, or yesterday, was that we will continue to do algebraic proofs throughout the year. It's not something that's going to be one section and done. We need to figure it out because this is how you prove a lot of the geometry proofs we're going to do is it might require algebraic uh, steps to do it. Uh, so the big thing today, we need to know your properties of equality. Okay. Properties of equality. These, there was seven of them. Okay. You need to know them. Uh, we're gonna, I'll go through the PowerPoint real quick here in a second just to flip through it. Okay. Uh, the next thing, you need to know your field properties. The field properties of real numbers. Now, the big thing that we talked about on, on yesterday was that the field properties, we actually use those to get down to your final answer, to actually solve. And we kind of hinted at that. Well, we're going to practice it today. We're actually going to put it in practice. We'll try a couple out with your little group. I'm going to give you a little challenge question today, see how you can do with it, okay? Uh, but the first thing is we have to review what these properties are, and then we'll do some examples of them, okay? All right, so let me put up the PowerPoint here so we can get uh, get kind of a feel for it, and then we'll get started here. All right. Okay, all right, real quick, um, okay, real quick, uh, let's talk about these algebraic proofs. Here's the properties I want to go through real quick. Um, properties of equality, right? Um, if we're actually going to discuss what these properties of equality are, reflexive is the first one. That's where you set something equal to itself. Um, it's got to be identical on both sides. Okay, keep that in mind. Identical on both sides is first to be reflexive. Um, symmetric. They're merely taking the right and left side and switching um, the entire side from one side to the other. Okay. Um, now, for it to be these three, these three in particular, um, the big thing is they have to give you an equation, and then they have to show you a second one where they flip them. Does that make sense? Like they showed you the original equation, something equals something, and then the next line down, the second line of the proof, they would show that they switched the entire sides. Some people like get thrown off that I can just switch individual items around, like individual numbers. That's a different property. That's commutative, not symmetric. I think I talked about that yesterday in class. Transitive, you have three equations, two equations, and then you make a new third one off of it. That's based on the first two. Um, and then the last ones, they magically um, add something to both sides, divide something to both sides. Um, that's the you know addition, multiplication, subtraction, division, property, and equality. They can do something to both sides that wasn't already there, you can make up numbers, right? So, for instance, if I gave you a problem like um, x plus seven equals 13, I can do anything I want to that problem. You know, I know they teach you, like they train you in algebra, that mm, the smartest thing to do is subtract seven, but 
Penn's like, I can do anything I want. I could magically take both sides times two. There'd be no rhyme or reason to do that, but I could do it, right? Because that's multiplication property equality. And I could write down what those numbers are. Right? 2x plus 14 equals 26. You know, I could I could magically multiply. Because that's what these properties allow you to do. You're allowed to place something on both sides, not maybe to go further, that's other properties, but like that. I could technically do that. Alright, but those are the field pro are these are the properties of equality. They require equations. The weird part is these three in the middle. These three. Symmetric, transitive, uh, th these three in particular um, really require that you have two equations. Actually, these two in particular require that you have two equations and that you're comparing the first one to the second one. So they have two lines of work shown. Because okay, that's the only way you can show it's not because the first line and the second line shows that they flip them. All right, now, the other properties we talked about yesterday, closure, we call that substitution. You're doing some simple math in the middle of your problem. It could be a very complicated problem. Um, plus 7y plus 12 plus 5 equals 25z minus 10. Now, it could be something very complicated, but in the next line down, maybe you just added the 12 plus 5 together. Now, you didn't really do anything else on this problem, but you added the 12 plus 5. That's substitution. That's called closure. You're replacing something of equal value with a number that wasn't already there. Now, the only way that it's not substitution you move things around like commutative property. You move parentheses around, which is associative. You create it zero. You create one by you know adding opposites together or dividing numbers. Those are like they look like substitution, but it's not because it's those create very special numbers. Remember, zero and one are the most special numbers in algebra. So when you create them or use them, those are different property names. But random numbers like twelve and five, yeah, it's substitution all day. It could be adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, as long as they're not making ones or zeros. Okay, now the next property we talked about was commutative. Well, in this problem, let's say I just slightly modify this problem that I had. Let's say it was something like this. Um, 11, and let's go 12x. Okay, let's say that that was my problem. Well, I would require, in the next line down, I would, be, I would require that you do commutative. Because I can't add the 3x and 12x. I need to move them, right? I need to move... This item over here, I need to move this item over here, but I'm not going across the equal sign. I'm going to move the items next to each other. It's called a line of sight, light terms, whatever you want to call it. Now, that's commutative, the green step. Now, I move things around. I didn't really add them yet. I just moved them next to each other so I can add them later. And okay, we're going to get to this. In fact, we need to talk about how you actually add variables today. Some people have a misconception. They know how to do it. You know the answer. You know that it's going to be 15x. But do you know how to do it correctly? That's the thing we have to talk about. Okay? All right. Uh, let's keep going on here. And again, I'm going to be seeing how well you can do it this day. How well do you remember your property names? Okay? That's why you need your Chromebook. You can look them up. Okay? Uh, associative. You move parentheses. Just the bars, not the actual numbers. Just the bars themselves move. Because maybe you're dire directing focus to a different location. Because maybe you can't actually add you know, 3x plus 11, but you can add the, the numbers in the back. Because like this would be a perfect example of like, why you'd want to move the parentheses. Maybe this is the start of your problem. Well, yeah, I can't even add these, so I'll move the parentheses to the back. And you're allowed to do that. Because everything's being added. It really doesn't matter the order you add things or the order you multiply things. It's still the same answer in the end. That's associative. We call it the, uh, the grouping, uh, grouping method property, but uh, I usually just call it associative. Don't abbreviate or anything like that for any of these. Always write out the words so you get the full words out. Okay? Identity property, there's two. I do ask that you always go very specific. Are you multiplying by one or are you adding zero? So it's additive identity or multiplicative identity. That, you need to use the multiplicative identity when you put a number in front of x or a y. Like if you introduce the number one, you have to do that properly. If you cancel terms out, like negative 2 plus 2 and make 0, you have to put 0. You can't just cross it out. You have to put 0, and then you have to add it later using this. Now, the thing I talked about yesterday, identities always follow the inverse properties. 
if you do an inverse, like a reciprocal or property of opposites, one of these two are going to follow. They have to, it's a guarantee. Okay, an inverse property, there's two. There's this one, the property of opposites, where you add numbers together or subtract them and they make zero. So remember, you make zero. Then after you do this property of opposites, you have to do the additive identity. You'll probably have to add zero later. Make it. You have to add zero. Okay. Uh, property of reciprocals, that's also an inverse. That's when you divide numbers and they make one. Like six divided by six makes one. That's that's a reciprocal. Then usually after that, you have to multiply by one. By one. So an identity always follows multiple identity. Now the last one, this one I want to get to today, distribution. We talked about yesterday what distribution is. It's this. Taking 3 times 2x plus 7. And you're going to distribute the 3 through, and this is what distribution looks like. That's distribution. It's not actually going further. It's just you handed out the 3 to both items, not actually multiplying. Now to go further, is this again, this is distribution. To go further, that requires other properties. What, what I talked about yesterday, the next property you have to do, it's 100% guarantee, it has to be associative. You have to move the parentheses around the numbers because they can't technically see each other. You have to move the parentheses around. So that's associative. Now I can do the math. Now I can do the substitution steps, which is, what is that, 6x plus 21. And that's substitution. I did some simple arithmetic there to multiply. There's no ones or zeros, so I didn't need to worry about it. That's, that's distribution. Now, here's the weird thing. I said, I hinted at it earlier. If you're going to add variables together, let's say we're going to add 4x plus 3x. Everyone knows the answer. What do you get when you add them? 7x. So, so nice. But... Do you know the actual steps on how you're supposed to add them together? The correct math, not the, sh the shortcut. You guys know it's, it's 7x. You guys know shortcuts. The real math behind it. It's called distribution. Reverse distribution of x. It's called factoring. You have to take the x. They both have an x on them. You have to take the x in the back. That's the one thing that they both have in common. And so you have the 4 and 3 left together. That's actually how you're supposed to add variables together. You don't actually add x's. You add the numbers in front of them. So this is actually a step. If you have variables on your problem that you have to add, you have to do this step next, where you take the numbers out, where you take the x out. That is called reverse distribution, or I just call it distribution. I'm going backwards. And again, why did I put the x in the back? Because that's where it was found. It was found in the back, so I put it in the back. Only one of them, because both of them are It's the common item that they have. It's called factoring. Then you can add these together, which is 7x, and that is substitution. That's how you're supposed to add variables every single time. You have to do these steps when you add variables. Algebra is a lot more difficult than you think it is. It's, there's a lot of steps to algebra. Like you guys learn shortcuts over years because that's, they want you to at least know what the answer is. But you knew it said, you knew the answer was 27x. Now you have to step back and see why. What was the math? Why did they come up with that? This is why. All right, now today, because obviously these are all the properties, right? These are all the ones we have. I want to practice it. So what I need you to do, I know this is going to be a shameless plug, I need you to go on your Chromebook, at least one person in your group needs to go on my website, mrward.org, make your way to yesterday's lesson. That was the 26th. So one person at your table, please. I'm having you go there is it has a list of all the properties. So that's nice. Okay, so now that every group is on my website, you made your way to the daily lessons, drop them to geometry, go to the 26 that was yesterday. Okay, every group in here is going to get two problems in front of them. Now, you're probably going to go, oh my god, I have to do this. No. There is only one property for each of these problems. I do not want you to write on this. Did everyone hear that? What? You will not write on this. Okay. You will, you will be just basically telling us out loud what you're doing. Gotcha. Okay? All right. 
I'm going to hand this out. So it's one property per problem. Each group is going to get two problems here. And you have to tell me what the property they were doing. Now, here's the problem and why I'm doing this. They may or may not have done the problem wrong. So your goal is to figure out what is the one property they were, they were attempting to do, and why did they do it either right or wrong, and what was the property called? So I'll give you a taste of this, because you're probably like freaking out, like, oh my god, I have no idea what we're doing here. OK, so let me give you a taste of what you're doing. Alright, so here's what we're doing. I'm going to do the first couple for you, because every group got two problems in front. So here you go. Let me uh, let me pull up the first one here so you can see this. Okay, now this, I know everyone's like, oh, you got the easy one. No, everyone's got an easy one. It's just whether you know the property or not. Alright, so here you go. So, this is my problem. So they attempted to do some magical property from this side to this side. Okay, does that make sense? They did something from the left to right side. You have to figure out what property they were doing. Well, when you look at this math, what did they actually attempt to do? What type of math is that? Yeah, so that, that would be your property name. Now again, don't write on your paper. You wanna, if you want to write on something, write in your own notebook. Okay, you're going to just tell me out loud what your property is. Now, here's the question. Did they do their distribution correctly? Technically, they did skip a step. They, they, they didn't just hand the five to the 3 and the 5 to the 4. They actually jumped right to the answer. But did they at least get their answer right? Yeah, the answer is right. Uh, you know, 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 4 is 20. But they did skip a step. But the big thing is, do you, can you understand what this property name is? Now I'm going to do another one for you, because you're probably going, OK, I still don't get it. So here, let's do the second one now. So no, we're not going to do number 9. So we're going to do number 2 here. OK, so number 2. So here's mine, okay? So from the left to right side, left to right. So this is the original problem, and then suddenly they have now changed it. What did they do to this problem from here to this side? It's reflected, it's symmetric. It's, it's not symmetric. Symmetric requires that I have two lines of work like this. Okay? That this is symmetric. You have to have one line, and then they have to have a second line. So I don't have two lines to work here. I only have one problem. They did some math from here to here. Okay, what is the one property where you move things around? Associative. Not associative. Commutative. 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 Associative is when you move parentheses. Some of you might have parentheses later. Okay, commutative is the one item where they move things around. Did they successfully switch these items to make this thing correctly? No. That's a no. Look at this problem. If you if you switch these correctly, what's the problem from here to there? On one side the negative force, the other yeah. on the other side is force. Yeah. Here's yeah. Here's the idea. This side had a negative in front. When you switch their order to do commuter because you can move things around, this should have been a negative four C and a positive eight. Because the negative was attached to the four, the eight was positive. When you switch them, you just made them opposites. This is not the same answer. So they did some incorrect math. That, they did incorrect. So you're looking at the left side. What did they do from here to there? Here's the trick. It will not be a property of equality like symmetric or transit. Because if you look at all these problems that are on your pages, they don't give you multiple equations back to back to back. So it can't be symmetric or, or transit. Okay? It could be some of the other ones, but it can't be those two specifically. So kind of get, get symmetric and get transit out of your head. It will not be those two. Those two require multiple lines of work. OK? All right, your goal right now, figure it out. Go to my website. Click on yesterday's lesson. You can click through. Your goal is in a, about five to 10 minutes, you're going to tell the, the class what your property name is and why you think it's either true or false. And you're going to be walking up here to do it. Oh, you're, you're going to display it in front of everybody. Oh, you're 
And they have arrows, so you can just click back. Chewbacca over here. Hey, remember, I'll probably go only about five minutes here because you guys have seem like you're getting it done. They're pretty straightforward. They're pretty easy. Or the light of the law. Will Ferrell and the law. No, they're not going to be the same. They're two individual problems. They're going to be the same problem. They may, they may not be. They could have been worse. They may not be. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Okay, remember, your goal is just to figure out what is the one property they were attempted. Now, if you don't know where the, pro uh, the properties are, they're at the bottom. I have the PowerPoint there. Look at the yeah, yes, you I don't know. I they don't have that, so would that be uh, symmetric or trans? No, because symmetric trans would be Those would require multiple lines of work. Now, did they even do their math right? It's definitely here, it's definitely false. They were tempted. Which one? Because you have like three multiple It's all of them. Alright, what do you got? You get this. Right there, number five. Okay, good. Okay, and the next one. Okay, so you guys figure out what they were talking about. Move to the next slide. Oh, you click it. Okay, about a minute here, I'm going to start with group two. Now, here's the crazy thing. Some of these problems, if they're false, like because maybe they did their math incorrectly, there is potential that your problem has a couple of different answers it could be, depending on how your group looked at it. Because maybe they got it false, but you're trying to figure out, okay, what property is it? Because it could have it could have been they were attempting to do multiple types of properties. So uh, we'll explain those couple of groups in here that are going to get stuck on it. So all right, uh, we'll start with group two here in a second. Who's group two? Who's got this one? Uh, A plus X. Who's got this one? Okay, so you gotta go first. Alright, 
Do the best you can. Explain it. Now, if you're in this room and you're paying attention, you should be writing these down your notes so you can actually see what they're doing here. Because they are correct. They've already walked me through it. Okay, fire away. So, you might want to move out of the way so I can see. It. There you go. Ah, there you go. Hey, explain, please. Uh, that one's commutative. That yeah, is correct. Explain why. Why is it commutative? Because they split them. They were negative. Good. Your second one. Associative and correct. Associative. What is associative? Explain. Uh, moving the grouping symbols. There you go. Yeah, so the grouping symbols. Are, they didn't move any of the numbers. Seven, four, nine never moved. Just the bars did. Perfect. Good work. Okay. Let's move on to the next group. That was excellent. Easy peasy. Excellent. All right, so we're on number five. So again, if you're writing these down, that's how easy it should be. You're just having the one property they were attempting to do. Is it true or false? Okay, next group, please explain. Ow. So they were trying to do the associative property? That's a big thing. You cannot move the the bars, the parentheses, on division. It doesn't work. It's not the same answer. Good. Excellent. That was associated. Move on. That one is additive identity because they're adding zeros and they're still using the same answer. It is correct. There you go. Perfect. Nicely done. Okay. Number seven. Who's my seven group? All right. Come on up. Explain, please. <laughs> Okay, substitution false. Good. That's one way they could look at it. They were trying to substitute 51 plus 1. Random math, right, Adam? They did it wrong. Now, can anyone look at that problem? Is there a different thing that they may have been attempting to do, but they did it wrong? Well, times 1. Times 1. Instead, that would have been a different property. What property would that have been? Identity. Multiplication identity. Multiplicative identity. So that one had two potential answers. I love the substitution idea. That's great. I like the multiplicative identity idea where you're multiplying by one. So they got it wrong either way. So that's great. All right, number eight. Well done. Keep going. Uh, the associative property. Okay. They do it right or wrong. Right. They did it correct. Why? Why is it correct? Because double multiplying. There you go. It works over multiplying and adding. Perfect. Nicely done, Ruth. That was actually very good. So. All right, number nine. I like it. All right, here we go. All right, so, okay. Number nine is false. And, false? Uh, we, I think it's multiplicative identity. I agree. If, if it's false because multiplicative identity, I agree with that, because what should they have been multiplying by instead of zero? Uh, one. One. That would have given the correct answer. Um, it could have been also other properties. I think you guys are kind of listing off a couple. Do you have any other ideas what it could have been? Uh, I think that's all of the six. Okay. I agree. Multiple identity. It should have been a one. I also thought it could have been additive identity. Maybe they were trying to add zero instead. So it had multiple answers. That was very well done. Keep going. Number ten. Number ten. We were like a priest and we got stuck. We did not figure that out one day. Okay. Now here's my question. Did they move the, the letters? From this side, the X, Y, Z, do they move them over here? No. No. They move the bars. So what property are they doing? They move bars. Except with an A. That's how you did. Can you do it over subtraction? No. It's definitely false. That's definitely wrong. Good. Good work. All right. Easy peasy. Let's put you guys on the spot. Number 11, please. Okay. Why did they do it wrong? Because they moved the numbers. Um, like, they moved the numbers instead of the Okay, so they moved the numbers instead of parentheses. Now, is the math actually incorrect, though? No. No. So, in fact, I could definitely see somebody saying it's false because of the associative. They moved the bars. But that wasn't the main property amount. Oh. What property were they attempting to do? And they did it right. Commutative. It's commutative. I told you. So, I, hey, I agree. If you guys thought it was associative, they did the associative wrong, they moved the, the numbers with it, but they actually moved the left item and right item. They actually switched their locations here and here. 
That's actually called commuted overs, and they actually did it right. You can do commuted over addition. So, but good way to think about it, but you guys already said the math was actually correct if you guys do it. Now, next one. What are they attempting to do? We think this one's distributed. It, it is distributed. <laughs> yep. Now, is it right or wrong? Wrong. Wrong, why? Because they didn't put an A on the C too. Hey, there you go. You gotta put the A on the C as well for it to be distribution. Very well done, all right. Nicely done, groups. Okay, so now you guys get, now the reason why I did that, not to throw in the deep end right away, was, was kind of the purpose, but it's nice to see, can we do a problem? Okay, now I have another challenge for you. Now this is for your groups individually, again. So, here's what I like you to do. I'm going to zoom in here. What? In your group. No, no. Well, where am I? There's my group. All right. There it is. Okay, in your groups, here's what I'd like you to look at. This top crown number one here. I would like your groups to go through and actually try to simplify this algebra problem. Just simplify it. It doesn't have any equal signs. You can't solve it. Simplify it. Now, I don't even mind if you don't use properties right now. I want to know what is the answer. The simplified answer for that problem. Take two minutes. Let's see what your group can do. Let's see if you guys can figure out the simplified answer for this thing, for number one. Okay? I'll give you two minutes here. I can't make it any bigger. Can, do we list the property? No, no property. Just do the math, no properties. So do you have to that? Is that on your website? No. Just to write like the I will eventually put it. It'll be up there today. Did you write your steps out? No. Uh, well, if you have multiple things for work that you're going to show, yes. But not no property names. Just show the work, whatever work you're doing, try to show as much work as possible. No property. Stay away from the properties for right now. You guys get overwhelmed by that. What if you identify the property knowing what you That's fine. You can test it. But remember, requirements. What I want you to get to right now is can you even do the math right? No. Yes. Adam's on. He's on. I can see him work. I'm going to walk around and collect these little pieces. I'm going to work. I just get to do this. Now, apologies if the alarm goes off on that thing because I have a timer set, so it might be really loud. Sorry, the speaker. Let's divide them. All right. You can divide that by one. Did you get your piece of paper? Or did you? Yeah, I had you. Oh, I guess it's not. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, one more minute. One more minute. Let's see if you guys can get down to the final answer. Maybe showing some steps. Okay. Okay, so timers timers up. Okay, what did we get? What was the final, final, final answer? What did we come up with after maybe a couple lines of work but no property names? What do you guys get to? X equals 40. Definitely not. Okay, hold on. Alright, say it. 20 X. Minus 70y. 70y plus 80. Plus 80. All right, that is correct. That's what you should get to in the end. Oh, I had that. Oh, I went farther. No, you can't I go further. That, you most further most people attempt to go further. Why can't we go further? No like terms. No like terms? No equal sign. No equal sign. Those are like the main two reasons right there. I can't go further. There's no equal sign. You can't just introduce an equal sign and then solve it. Can't do it. Now, the good thing is most of you can get to this point. Now, if you went further, yeah. All right, but... Most of you can get there. The problem is, can we show all the steps to get there? It should take about three steps or so. Okay, so to do this correctly, to show all the work, here's the work that should have been on your paper. 
you put the 10 with the 2x, the 10 with the 7y, and the 10 with the 8. And I don't care what order you put it in like that. I don't care if you put 10 first and the 8 in the front seat. Now, you're, you're handing the 10 to each item. Maybe I'll switch that around so it looks a little more clean. All right, there you go. Okay, so you handed the 10 each. That is called distribution. You've handed it out. Now, most of you probably skipped that step. You went right to the next one. Right, that's distribution. You hand it out. The next step is you have to move the parentheses to be around the numbers. You have to move the parentheses around the numbers. That is called associative. It always follows distribution. You have to move the parentheses around because we've got to get the numbers so they can see each other. Then your next line is where you do the work where everyone should get to, which is substitution. Substitution. Okay? We can actually add items together. Okay? All right. Questions, comments about the look of that problem? That's it. That's three step problem. That, by the way, that's a great test question. Okay. Now, we're going to practice properties more and more, but that's the type of work that I expect to see. You're showing the work. You know how to do it. Okay, we're good so far. Next one, I'm going to give you two minutes on this one. Only two minutes. This is our last problem of the day. Oh, two minutes. You can attempt to do the properties, yes. Okay, so number two. Okay, number two. Here we go. This is our last problem today. Now, we will practice more and more of these to get better at them as we go. But I would like you to attempt number two now. Now, I will preface this. Do not attempt to solve. Do not tell me that W equals 7. You can't go further. It only goes so far. There's no, there's no equal sign. Okay. Oh, did you write both problems down? Yeah. Oh. Well, I asked you to do the first. The first worry is, can you just get the answer right? That should be first worry, number one. Get the answer right. Then you can fill in the gaps. seconds here. Okay, all right. Somebody want to walk me through. What's the first step? Move it over, right? Yeah. That's the first step. We gotta put them next to each other. You can't just automatically subtract. You gotta move them next to each other. I gotta move them around because you need to group like terms. A lot of people always attempt to take four minus three right away. You're actually jumping too many steps. So you gotta move them so they can actually see each other. That is called commutative. You gotta move them. Okay? You're commuting, move. Okay, now, the next part. What do we need to do next? Does anyone know? Okay, negative 10 plus 7. We'll do that here in a minute. We, we could do that. Okay, yeah, we gotta attempt to subtract variables, right? This is how you do it. You have to take the W out. 
A lot of people skip that step. They always forget when you add variables. So you have to do that. Okay, we'll continue this Monday. Now, I will add this to the website tonight if you want to attend to do a couple of these. But Monday, we will have homework. Be ready. Do like homework over this? Over this. I think for the winter. Oh, that's even more real. Real hard, huh? Thank you. But I think you're just going to run it. Or, like, you're about to get one of these things. Well, I mean, homework, I don't know. Tests I do, but homework, homework I'm bad at. You know, there's a lot of points to play. I don't know. See you, Mr. Ward. Later. Have a good weekend.